Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with an updated Magpar PvP build. Took me a while to find the sweet spot between survivability, resource sustain, and damage, but I think I found it. You'll want to watch this video for a flexible Templar PvP build in which I give you a ton of options based on your skill level and playstyle. Me, I'm still the old meathead, charge in front, tough as nails playstyle, and this is exactly where this build shines. If you like these type of videos, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and consider following me over on twitch.tv slash deltiasgaming where I play these builds live. Thanks for watching. For me and my playstyle, the previous gear loadout was significantly nerfed. Both Hrothgar and Mechanical Acuity took a metaphorical arrow to the knee in Update 32 Deadlands, so I've switched to some new sets and some old sets. I've also dropped Restoration Staff for an old school Sword and Shield playstyle. Reason being, I typically run lower Max Magicka pool and higher Health pool, so the healing from my Max Magic pool is a bit lower, giving me some more defenses with holding block and using my Stamina pool to reduce damage. Though I'm going to give you some flexible options if you like the restoration staff and the rapid regen playstyle. The most important thing to know about the Magpar is why and how it shines. That's due to the passives and skill that scale and effectiveness based on your spell damage. So the entire build premise is high spell damage and a little bit higher health pool. Magpar does very well with high spell damage due to a passive balance warrior giving a 6% based amp to spell damage along with another important passive from Dawn's Wrath, Illuminate. Casting a Dawn's Wrath ability gives you minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. So with the degeneration or spell power potions and one Dawn's Wrath ability, you're the only class that can get major and minor sorcery solo, along with the 6% spell damage bonus without using any pieces of medium armor. And your two most important abilities scale and effectiveness on spell damage, making our gear choices focus on spell damage. Living Dark for survivability and Purifying Light for burst damage that cannot be avoided. This is why you'll typically see Templar set up spec towards high spell damage rather than high max magicka pool because it's more effective. You'll also benefit from a higher health pool, which is easier for newer and beginning players because you don't have to react so quickly and keep up your buffs 100% of the time to survive. Your channeled rune in Living Dark, for instance, also scale and effectiveness based off your max health pool, giving you some survivability if you go with high spell damage and a high HP pool. You'll lose some damage in sacrificing the max magic, but you'll be much, much more survivable. So you'll need to find the sweet spot between damage and tankiness, and let's discuss this, the skills first, so it becomes clear how this can be done and why. The first weapon choice up is a lightning staff, and the reason we choose a lightning staff as a mag part is the ancient knowledge passive and destruction staff skill line. Equipping and lightning staff increases your damage done with area effect abilities by 10%, yes, including your puncturing sweeps, so this is why a lightning staff is really useful. Another reason lightning staff is really useful is because it's easier to channel a fully charged heavy attack. You lock onto a target, press your mouse or your controller or whatever button down, and then it rips it off full giving you a lot of resource sustain. It's much easier and focuses on massive AoE damage. So I'm going to work left to right on my abilities and number one is toppling charge. This is a hard hitting gap closer that procs off balance. Off balance is important and useful for you to understand how it works. You're going to see a little twirly around someone's head. That's what the off balance looks like along with a little pop up if you have those enabled. You can rip off a fully charged heavy attack to consume the off balance giving you two times the resources back. So this this is our sustain loop is doing a toppling charge, setting off balance, ripping off a fully charged heavy attack with a lightning staff to sustain. Also, the trick with this ability is it's pretty telegraphed if you do it at a very large range, very large distance. So you're wearing to kind of close the gap and use it as a setup mechanic for your burst. Your number one priority is to center your damage around purifying light window and stunning the target so they cannot react when it goes off and heal themselves or try to avoid any other pressure. Speaking of purifying light, let's talk about that next. This is from Dawn's Wrath, so it's going to proc that illuminate when we use it, which is going to give us more spell damage. It's your burst damage. It procs that spell damage, and it gives you a heal at the base for six seconds, which is very, very useful, especially in a duel or in melee. This is your killing tool, so think of it as a balloon. It soaks up damage, and after six seconds, 
seconds, uh, based on a percentage amount of damage you've done, it releases for huge burst. This ability also scales off of spell damage, and this is your number one kill mechanic, is using Purifying Light, then launching into attack, doing a ton of damage, and it blows up after six seconds. You're going to set up your burst window right as that Purifying Light is about to pop, so it does a lot of damage, and they can't react. Next ability up is your Flex Spot, and what I do is I put Inner Light here. Inner Light's going to give you max stats, max magic, which you need. It's going to hit pretty hard. You're going to get spell critical, and you can activate it to counter gankers. But consider this your flex spot. The reason I like this skill on my front bar is because it makes it just very, very simple. You can put something like the beam up here. I would go with the Radiant Glory morph because it's going to heal you based on percentage of the damage done. The downside with Radiant Glory is this. Yes, you can kill targets with it, but it's going to be very, very hard to kill someone in a one-on-one -on -one environment who knows how to interrupt and bash this. Crushing Shock will interrupt you. Just a bash will interrupt you. It'll leave you exposed if those things happen happen, but you can kill a lot of targets with it. Another option is to put degeneration up here and freeing up a spot on your back bar, especially if you're going to run a restoration staff. You can also use camo hunter in this spot as well to get more spell damage rather than more max magic. Either way, consider this your flex spot. Moving on, puncturing sweep is up next. This is our main spammel that heals us based on the damage done. This thing hits like a massive Mack truck. It's in a conal, and the strength is when you're doing damage and being aggressive, you're rewarded for healing. Just make sure to keep up your living dark bubble alongside of puncturing sweep so when you go on the offensive for even more survivability so if you see this front bar mechanic so far we literally have two skills purifying light puncturing sweeps and then toppling charge to use a setup living dark is up next and one of the best survivability skills in the entire game what it's going to do is put a bubble on you it costs a lot of magic it's going to last six seconds. Living Dark scales in effectiveness, meaning how well it heals you based on one of two stats, your max health or your max spell damage, whatever is the highest. So you're going to want to send your build around either max health or high spell damage. And this build in particular has both. That way you don't have to keep up your buffs 100% of the time to be very, very survivable. The trick with this is, is to be cognizant of the spell cost and make sure that it's just about to elapse to before you recast it because it will blow through your magic, especially when you're playing in no CP PvP. You'll want to preemptively cast this before charging in. That way you'll get about six seconds where you're taking a lot of damage in melee range, but you'll be healed with Living Dark and Puncturing Sweeps combo to be very survivable up front meathead play style. The ultimate of choice on my front bar is Crescent Sweep. This is our low cost nuke. The strength of the skill is enemies in your path get hit for 60% more damage. Thus, kneeling after stunning an opponent can result in massive burst damage. Even against tanky players, with my buffs up and my debuffs applied, I can hit this thing for 12,000 damage. And it does it in a full 360 radius, and the cost is just super, super low. Now we're going to switch to the back bar, and that's Sword and Shield. I like Sword and Shield because you can block user stamina pool to reduce damage and calmly think about what to do next. The Restoration Staff without Gaze of Sithis, I found myself exposed and kind of out in the open. This gives me a little bit more time, a little bit more practice and patience of what should I do next when I'm taking pressure. And I'd highly recommend it if you're getting dogpiled all the time and you're getting frustrated and getting blown up, try Sword and War, trust me. Number one ability working left and right, and that's channel focus. This gives you resource sustain in your armor buff. You'll get a nice bit of healing for standing in the room if you have a higher health pool. So I'd recommend newer players or folks unfamiliar with PvP to run max HP, all attributes into health, because this ability, along with living dark, scale off of max health, making you very tanky, especially if you need help with that and you're not comfortable keeping up living dark and line of sighting. Next ability up is Extended Ritual, another one of the strongest defensive abilities in the game. You to cleanse up to five negative effects with one cast. And with all the Dragonites running around this time, you will have five debuffs on you all the time. The gear set Plague Break may give you some problems in larger groups because if you cleanse with this up, it's going to blow up and do a lot of damage. But if you're small grouping it or solo, it's worth casting the ritual to remove five dots and taking a little bit more damage. Consider this your second part of your Templar house. So setting it down when you're ready to be on the defensive or launch into an attack. Next up is Race Against Time. This skill is your mobility tool that gives you a burst of speed, removal of mobilizations, and also gives you minor force for 12 seconds. This is nice prior to launching into the offensive because what's going to happen is you're going to have some decent crit rating on your front with inner light 
die and you're going to do really really good crit damage with race against time up consider this your flex spot if you prefer vampire use elusive mist here i do not care for stage three vampire the downsides are you're going to take a lot of flame damage you're going to have the undeath passive which it will reduce your damage taken but you're also going to have eight percent more cost to abilities especially in no cp pvp like battlegrounds this can be a lot to deal with next ability up is the generation moderate damage over time that gives us our major sorcery buff increasing our damage consider this your flex spot so you can use spell power potions if you want to free up a spot and this is where i would put rapid regeneration in a restoration staff if i preferred that play style but i like the sword and shield putting this on my back bar especially if i'm using daedric trickery i can proc daedric trickery on my back bar using this skill at range really like it honor the dead is up next this is our burst heal and it gives a bit of sustain back the trick is to not rely on this ability unless you're very low you'll want your heals to come from channeled rune bubble ritual and the majority of the work comes from those skills otherwise you're going to blow through your magic just sitting there casting honor the dead spell wall is up next this is the sword and shield ultimate this is our survivability tool that's great when taking a lot of pressure at range or a lot of targets are dogpiling and hammering you this is what i use when i'm near out of stamina what i'll do is i'll cast this and take advantage of that damage reduction via block and i'll rip off one or more fully charged heavy attacks to get some stamina back while that is still up then i can go back to blocking and or my engine guardian might proc giving me some more stamina sustain consider this your flex spot and if you're using the restoration staff use the life giver in this skill position let's talk about the rotation and kind of how to use this templar house basic stuff here but you're going to put your rune and ritual down one and two that's going to give you armor going to give you some healing put a synergy down for others and now you're going to be ready to launch into an attack what i would do is typically is hit race against time if you have the magic for it proc degeneration on your back bar then bar swap now you're going to lock onto a target that you want to attack you're going to put purifying light on that target and then you're going to launch into the attack with toppling charge if you have a crescent and sweep up it's nice to hit it right then and then throttle down with one or two sweeps this gives you about four seconds and with about one more second the purifying light should pop and explode you're either going to kill the target throttle down with more sweeps or put up your living dark and peel back and launch again remember that you're going to have about a five to six second window in pvp especially if you're not running a pocket healer so typically you launch kind of peel back reset the fight do the exact same things when your buffs are up the best combo really is to land that crescent and and a toppling charge right before purifying light goes off you want the maximum amount of damage to be soaked up on the target and then them to be stunned so when it blows up they cannot react quickly and then you just hit one or more sweeps to destroy them okay now let's go ahead and talk about the gear selection so i'm going to give you two options i've experimented with this extensively and two setups i found work really really well the first setup that i'm going to go with prioritizes burst damage with some survivability so a lot of debuffs and high spell damage the monster helm of choice i'm going to go with this good old engine guardian from veteran darkshade cavern 2 the reason why, if I'm going with Sword and Shield, I'm going to be blocking quite a bit for survivability rather than just face tanking and using Resto Staff. So getting this little spear to cast stamina allows me to be much, much, much more survivable, though I will sacrifice some offensive potential for this. Not to mention the droid makes a great decoy. I cannot tell you how many times people toppling charge it, launch a meteor at it, and it saves my life because I'm not taking the damage. Some flexible options that I would recommend for you is one, magma incarnate this is good spell damage it has good resource sustain and good group utility the downside with it is you're not going to have near the resource sustain and also the spell damage and or resolve and resistances can go to someone else especially if you're healing with honor the dead so you don't always get to choose where this goes and you're not going to have 100 percent uptime scourge harvest or malabeth is incredible for self-healing so it's going to give you a really important major buff when you're taking damage along with good healing over time especially if you're running a high hp pool this makes you crazy survivable and don't sleep on grothdar this is good aoe damage so if you're charging in it's going to do a massive aoe circle a little bit of damage but now proc sets can crit so if you're jumping into a fight in big huge cyrodiil this could be a good one now i'm going to run a back bar set and typically what i do my back bars are run a defensive set but we're going to do the actual opposite on this one we're going to run perfected 
Olemeyer obtaining Veteran Cloud Rust. What this is going to do is give us Major Courage, increasing our spell damage for 430 for 20 seconds, and it can be done every 10 seconds, giving you 100% uptime. You have to place a ground effect, and your extended ritual and your channel of focus can proc this. It's an incredible buff because it gives you pretty much 100% uptime on a massive amount of spell damage, and you can use it on your back bar and then flip to your front bar for another offensive set or a defensive set. So essentially, you can reach seven, 8,000 spell damage if you do it right. Not to mention another added advantage of this is allies can walk in that circle and get a massive influx of spell damage as well. So it's great individually and incredible group utility as well. Now we're going to talk about the front bar set, and I've tested a lot of them, and I really, really like kind Marcher's Cruelty, obtaining the Deadland Zone or through Guild Traders. Essentially, this is the offensive danger trickery. When you deal direct damage, you apply one of five major debuffs to enemies within eight meters for 18 seconds. So they're going to have an 18 second debuff and you can stack two of them on top of each other. Major Breach, Cowardice, Defile, Maim, or Major Vulnerability. And one of the only sources of Major Vulnerability outside of a Necro. The nice thing about this is you're going to do a massive AoE debuff. And yes, they can cleanse it, but you're going to be able to reapply it and keep it up a lot of the time. So it's going to be great group utility. And you're going to hit very, very hard, or they're going to hit like a noodle or not be able to heal. All of the debuffs are really impactful, and you'll see a big change in your performance, along with great group utility, especially in battlegrounds or playing with small group. So that's going to be our front bar set, and then our back bar is going to be Oli. Let's move on to the mythic of choice, and that's Death Dealer's Fate. This is just going to give us 2,680 max stats across the board, health, stamina, and magicka. So we're going to run a little bit lower max magicka pool, so this is going to help our healing a little bit of the damage. Our health, we're going to scale a lot of our abilities off of max health. That's great. And having a little bit more max stamina means we can block and dodge a little bit more. So that is going to increase our damage. It's going to increase our healing and it's going to be make us more survivable. A couple of different options in case you wanted. Torque is really, really good for resource sustain. So if you want to drop engine guarding for an mo offensive monster helm, go with Torque. Another one is the new Markhands ring. And this comes from Deadland and Mythic. I don't even have it yet, but it's going to give you a little bit of spell damage and armor for wearing three or more pieces of gear. So if you want to eat even more high spell damage rather than more max stat, that's an option. And then we're going to do one piece of trainee on the body. So gear setup chart looks like this. I'm going to run four heavy, three light. Pine marchers on the front, lightning staff, sharpen trait. Back bar is going to be sword and shield only, powered and sturdy. I'm going to run prismatic glyphs on my large pieces. So that's head, chest and legs, magic on the rest. I prefer all infused traits on the jewelry with spell damage and use the Atronach Mundus Stone for resource sustain. And then one piece of light trainee gives me the best balance for resource sustain, damage, and survivability. Now let's move on to option two, gear-wise. I've also ran this type of gear set as well, and it works really well. I go with four light on this one, and then three heavy. Monster Helm is up to you. I can stick with Engine Guarding, especially no CP PvP. And then I'm going to go with War Maiden on my front bar. War Maiden is just going to give you a crap ton of spell damage for your spell damage ability. So this will not apply to Living Dark, but it's very easy to obtain overland and guild traders and makes your sweeps and purifying light hit like an absolute hammer some other options that you can run for a front bar offensive set are new moon which is a craftable giving you 400 spell damage but giving you a little bit more ability cost don't sleep on scathing mage this is a pve kind of loadout but it does really really good proccing direct damage giving you a crap ton of spell damage and also a good old school set is soul shine it's heavy armor but it makes your main spam ball sweeps hit even harder and then we're going to go with the back bar set daedric trick this is going to give you the major buffs that are defensive based. You can proc with a generation on your back bar. It makes you very, very survivable. And some other options to flex in and out here are Iron Blood. This is a great for duels or being super tanky when you don't need mobility. And then another option for players you can run is Grace of Gloom. This is insane survivability if you have a high HP because it gives you healing and an important buff, major evasion. And then it's kind of the same premise here. Traits on the body are going to be impenetrable with one reinforce. Glyphs are going to be prismatic with Max Magicka. Switch the weight and traits if you want. I don't prefer running medium armor. I really like the heavy and light combination. Infuse on the jewelry with spell damage. And then sharpen on the weapon along with power and sturdy on the back bar using escapist poisons. These two loadouts is what I worked really well with. So consider this one a good option for solo individual. And then the kind marcher is great for great group and big, huge damage and debuffs.
Now let's talk about the champion points and you have a lot of different options. I actually like Untamed Aggression increasing my spell damage because we already talked about how well spell damage scales. Ironclad reducing damage taken by direct damage attacks make you very survivable all around. And then two offensive ones, Deadly Aim and Master of Arms, increasing your single target and direct damage abilities. And that gives me a good blend of survivability and big damage. Moving on to the fitness tree. I'm going to go with Boundless Vitality for max health, Slippery to get a free CC break every 21 seconds especially in big lag Cyrodiil fights. Bracing Anchor when I'm holding block reduces my damage and Fortify for a little bit more max armor. Crafting Green Tree really doesn't affect performance that much, but I'm going to go with Treasure Hunter, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Steed's Blessing. For racial choices, I like the High Elf overall. And one reason why is you have a unique uh, ability, Spell Recharge. When you are using an ability with the channel or a cast time, you have a 5% less damage incoming. This can stack with minor and major protection, giving you a lot of damage reduction while you're hitting your sweeps. Not to mention you have more max magic up and a lot of weapon and spell damage. Attributes, you want to probably go around 32,000 to 35,000 health to be safe. If you go less health and more max magic, you will hit harder, you will heal a lot more, but you'll be really close to dying if you do not keep your buffs up, line of sight, and just are perfect at PvP. I'd highly recommend even specking 64 health and attributes until you get the hang of the build. Next up is Munda's Choice, so I'm going to get my resource sustained primarily through the Atronach, increasing my magic recovery, and then go spell damage glyphs on my jewelry, and that's a good blend for me. Consumables, I'm going to go with Clockwork Citrus for Light, increasing my health, max magic, and magic recovery, along with Tri Potions, giving me a flood of resources and a much needed Stam resource. And then on my back bar, I'm going to go with Escapist Poisons, but primarily on my front bar, I rely on the Spell Damage Glyph, giving me a lot of uptime, increasing my spell damage significantly. Well, gang, that's the updated Magpar build. Hope you learned something. Take it, make it your own, mold it, and see what works best for you. But I love the sword and board, meatball playstyle, jumping in front, popping my living dark, in doing big damage by being very survivable. Born Deplar is my tagline. It's my favorite character of all time. I've had my best experience in becoming Emplar and a Magpar, and I still love the play style and just adapt it and make it work for you. Thanks for watching this video.